so many people think that money is the most important thing in the world, and if they don't have money, they would just die. But that's not true. There's a substance that is far more precious and far more important to us that we literally can't live without. What is that? Love. Love. No, plenty of people are miserable and lonely most of their life and, and, and live. Air. 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 Your air, your breath. Your breath is the most important thing that you have, the most precious thing. If you didn't take another breath, you wouldn't last three minutes and you'd never get out of this room. And yet we absolutely take for granted that our next breath is there. Look at us, we're all in this room breathing and I'm not saying don't breathe, there's not enough for me. We assume that it's there. And when we exhale, we don't think about where's my next breath coming from. <laughs> now, if the power that created us has given us enough breath to last for as long as we shall live, can we not begin to trust that the other things will take care of themselves? See, life is here for us. Life is here to support us, to take care of us, to be here for us. The entire planet has been put here for us to play with. We have everything that we shall ever need. It's already here. Only we have to know it, and we have to trust it, and we have to acknowledge it. Do you realize that there is more food on this planet than people could possibly eat? There's an incredible amount of food. Yes, it is true that there are people starving. But the food is here. There is more money on this planet than we know how to count. The money is here. Now, there are lots of people who are very broke, but the money is here. There are billions of people on this planet. And yet you will have people tell you that they're lonely. It has nothing to do with not being people. It's what we're doing with our heads. Everything is here for us. For every dis-ease on this planet, there is a plant that will cure it. Everything, everything is here for us. And the more we begin to trust life and acknowledge the beauty and magnificence of our own being, the more we find everything we need. It just pops up. Need motivation? What to top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael and I make these videos because you are probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more. And you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today let's learn from one of the best, Louise Hay, and my take on her top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. Rule number two, do positive affirmations. To begin with, you start by doing what we call doing affirmations, and that is making positive statements about your life that are positive, and you do them deliberately. You might do them in the morning, you might do them at noon, you might do them at night, uh, you might do them you know, twice a day or, or whatever, but you do this and you let this become a habit, and as you start to do them, things will begin to change, maybe on a very small level. I call it getting the green lights in the parking places. I mean, they're not huge things in your life, but it can be very nice when you get three green lights in a row and you're in a hurry. You know? yeah, yeah. Doing an affirmation is either writing it down, writing it on the wall or the mirror, or using a, a, a you know, just saying it. What I like people to do is to stand in front of a mirror and do their affirmations because there's something very powerful about looking in your own eyes and getting and accepting yourself or noticing that you reject yourself when you're saying something positive about yourself so that would be a very beginning way to start say in the morning you get up in the morning you go to the mirror and this is a big one and it's hard for lots of people but you look in the mirror and i say and say i love you I really, really love you. And to begin with, that can be so hard for people because they think of all the things that they think are wrong with them. But if you can start your day saying that, it's very powerful. Remember, I'd like to think the universe is listening to everything you say and everything you think and saying, okay, you can get that. So then it starts to bring you in and bring things into you. And I know this sounds far-fetched, but it's amazing how it works. You, if you do a good general positive statement for yourself, 
the universe will figure out how to manifest that. How to bring that about in your life. So things could happen that you wouldn't expect at all, but they will happen. If you think of doing your positive affirmations, it's like planting a seed in the ground. It's not necessarily true at the moment, but it is something you want to have be true. So you put the seed in, and you, you, you plant a seed and you expect it to grow. Or you maybe plant three seeds just in case. You, you expect them to grow. And you don't wait two days and then dig in the earth and say, what's happening, what's happening? You expect that thing to grow because you know there's a law and a process. And the seed will grow if it is in the right soil and it has the right amount of moisture. Making it really a habit and doing it every day, uh, doing something every morning when you wake up, that's a really good time. And another good time is when you go to sleep at night. Rule number three, watch your thoughts. The thoughts we think and the words we speak are constantly shaping our world and our experiences. Many of us are in an old habit of negative thinking and do not realize the damage we have inflicted upon ourselves. However, we are never stuck because we can always change our thinking. As we learn to consistently choose positive thoughts, the old negative ones dissolve away. So, as you listen to the following power thoughts, let the affirmations and ideas wash over your consciousness. Your subconscious mind will pick up the ones that are important to you at the moment. These concepts are like fertilizing the soil of your mind. As you absorb them by repetition, you are slowly enriching the very basis of your garden of life. Anything you plant will grow abundantly. I see you vibrant and healthy, surrounded by exquisite beauty, living a life of love and prosperity, filled with joy and laughter. You are on a wonderful pathway of change and growth. Enjoy your trip. My healing is already in process. Your body knows how to heal itself. Get the negative garbage out of the way. Then love your body. Feed it nourishing foods and beverages. Pamper it. Respect it. Create an atmosphere of wellness. Allow yourself to heal. Rule number four, take in all of life. Lungs have to do with taking in life. This is the breath of life. This is where we take in life. And we have the ability to take in just enough to get us by, or we can fill our lungs and really have all the cells in the body work well and our brain cells work well. Traditionally, for generations and generations, women have been very shallow breathers because we bought this story that said we're not good enough, that we're second-class citizens. And we began to believe that we didn't have the right to take up very much space and we barely had the right to exist, and so we take in just about enough air to keep us going. <laughs> That's changing now, and it's wonderful. And one of the things that really excites me today is what's happening with women in the gyms. You know, we have worked in the fields for a very long time, but I think this is the first time that I'm aware of where women have really gone out for sports. And you see some of the female bodies in the gyms these days that go out and exercise. They are incredibly magnificent. They're just wonderful. And they are taking in life and taking up space and taking air. And I think it's beautiful. So people who have lung problems, people who smoke too much, people who have emphysema and things like that, they're cutting life off. They're saying on some level, I don't deserve to exist. Or I only deserve to exist a little bit. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight all of the lessons learned in this video, as well as pull out our three favorite learnings and quotes that will inspire you to actually do something. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free, there's a link in the description below. Go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business. I'll see you there.
Rule number five, create better health. If you want to create better health in your body, there are definitely some things you must not do. You must not get angry at your body for any reason. Anger is another affirmation, and it is telling your body that you hate it or hate parts of it. Your cells are very aware of every thought you have. Think of your body as a servant that is working as hard as it can to keep you in perfect health no matter how you treat it. Your body knows how to heal itself. If you feed it healthy foods and beverages and give it exercise and sufficient sleep and think happy thoughts, then its work is easy. The cells are working in a happy, healthy atmosphere. However, if you feed it junk foods and drink lots of diet soda, be a couch potato and skimp on sleep and are grouchy and complaining all the time, then the cells in your body are working at a disadvantage and in a disagreeable atmosphere. Then it's no wonder that your body is not as healthy as you would like it to be. You will never create good health by talking or thinking about your illness. Good health comes from love and appreciation. You want to put as much love into your body as you possibly can. Talk to it in loving ways. Touch and stroke it in loving ways. If there is a part of your body that is ailing or diseased, then you want to treat it as you would a sick little child. Tell it how much you love it and that you are doing everything you can to help it get well quickly. If you are sick, then you want to do more than just go to the doctor and have him give you a chemical to take care of the symptom. Your body is telling you that something you are doing is not good for your body. You need to learn more about health. The more you learn, the easier it is to take care of your body. You do not want to choose to feel like a victim. That just gives your power away. You could go to a health food store and pick up one of the many good books that teach you how to keep yourself healthy. You could see a nutritionist and have a healthy diet created just for you. Or you could see a holistic health practitioner. Do create a healthy, happy mental atmosphere. Be a willing participant in your own health plan. I believe we create every so-called illness in our body. The body, like everything else in life, is a mirror of our inner thoughts and beliefs. The body is always talking to us if we will only take the time to listen. Rule number six, be grateful. Gratitude works a lot. Uh, if just being grateful for everything. The more, I always say the universe loves gratitude. The more you're grateful for what the good is in your life, the more good you get to be grateful about. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like, you know, if somebody gives you a present and you're, or gives me a present and I say, oh my God, I hate that color and it doesn't fit, and you know, that person will never give me another present. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you say, oh, it's wonderful and thank you, I really adore it, it's great, that person is probably going to want to buy you a present every time they see something they think you would like. And it's like that with the universe. The universe loves gratitude. Rule number seven, trust your inner wisdom. I trust my inner wisdom. There is a place within each of us that is totally connected with the infinite wisdom of the universe. In this place lie all the answers to all the questions you will ever ask. Learn to trust your inner self. As I go about my daily affairs, I listen to my own guidance. My intuition is always on my side. I trust it to be there at all times. I am safe. Rule number eight, customize your future. Continuous modes of thinking and speaking produce body behaviors and postures and eases or diseases. The person who has a permanently scowling face did not produce that by having joyous, loving thoughts. Older people's faces and bodies show so clearly a lifetime of thinking patterns. How will you look when you are elderly? Learn to accept that your life is not a series of random events, but a pathway of awakening. If every day is an awakening, you will never grow old. You will just keep growing. Imagine the day you turn 49 as the infancy of another life. A woman today who reaches the age 50 and remains free of cancer and heart disease, can expect to see her 92nd birthday. 
You and only you have the ability to customize your own life cycle. So change your thinking now and get going. You are here for a very important reason and all you need is available to you. You can create thoughts that create a mental atmosphere that contributes to illness, or you can choose to think thoughts that create a healthy atmosphere both within you and around you. Rule number nine, believe in the good. If you have very strong beliefs within you that you don't deserve good things in your life, Mm-hmm. And a lot of people have that. Then there can be delays. And sometimes people say, well, affirmations don't work. I've done them. But it, when they're doing, for instance, prosperity affirmations, and they've done some prosperity affirmations, and they say it doesn't work, nothing's happening. And I say, well, all right, how many prosperity affirmations did you do in a day? And they'll say three, probably. Mm-hmm. And they say, all right, how many poverty affirmations did you do this day? And that could be 300 depending on where you're coming from and what are, is running through your mind. See, I have this, one of my thoughts about life is that only good lies before me. And I've been saying this for many years. So it doesn't really matter to me what happens in life because I know it's going to be good. And rule number 10, the last one before some very special bonus clips is trust the process of life. I am deeply fulfilled by all that I do. We will never have the opportunity to live this day again, so we want to savor every moment. There is richness and fullness in everything we do. Each moment of the day is special to me as I follow my higher instincts and listen to my heart. I am at peace in my world and affairs. I trust the process of life. We are learning how life works. It's like learning your computer. When you first get a computer, you learn the simple basic processes, how to turn it on and off, and how to open and save a document, how to print. And on that level, your computer works wonders for you. And yet, there is so much more that it can do for you when you learn more of its ways. It's the same thing with life. The more we learn how it works, the more wonders it performs for us. There is a rhythm and flow to life and I am part of it. Life supports me and brings me only good and positive experiences. I trust the process of life to bring me my highest good. Resentment is a pattern that eats away at the body and becomes cancer. Resentment and anger are very different. Anger is and you scream and yell like a baby. Babies get angry instantly and they yell and shriek and then they're through and two minutes later their smiles will just light up a room because they've gotten it out. What we do is we take offense at somebody for having done something that we created to begin with because we're all 100% responsible and we don't do anything about it and we put it down in here and we start to let it seethe and it boils and it eats away at us and if we have it long enough we can create cancer. See diseases like arthritis are, are created from things, patterns of criticism. Arthritic people are always very very critical people. Now they may be sweet on the outside, but that means that the criticism is turned inward and they're doing a constant negative put down number on themselves. Now I know that you've heard me say many times or you've read or or listened on the tapes that loving yourself is the most powerful thing we can do. Then everything flows. Everything flows beautifully. And I'm not talking about vanity or arrogance because that is not love, that's always fear. I'm talking about just really respecting and appreciating this incredible, magnificent being that we are. You know, little babies know how to love themselves. You were born in pure love, all of you. There's not one little baby alive that I know of that ever criticizes its body or ever says, my hips are too big. Have you ever heard a baby say that? They're just thrilled and delighted that they have a body. And they rejoice in it. 
And they love themselves. They love their toes. They love everything about themselves. They absolutely adore. They express their feelings. You know, when a baby is happy, you know it. When a baby is angry, the whole neighborhood knows it. They're never scared to let people know how they feel. They live in the moment. And they're filled with courage. And they're wonderful. And we were all like that. Got to remember that you were filled with courage and you were full of love and you adored yourself when you were very little. I think that everything you think and everything you speak goes out from you into the universe and comes back to you multiplied. Uh, it's almost as though the universe is listening to everything you say and everything you think and saying, oh, that's what they want. You're saying this equality of life doesn't mean a really nice house or a really nice it car. It can, but it doesn't have to. But what good is a nice car if you are full of resentment all the time and you drive around hating everybody? That's not going to help anything. It's much better if you had an old car and you were grateful and, and appreciative of life. One of the things that I think about uh, the work that I do and the work our company does is that every product that we sell or that probably that you get as a gift from us uh, has the possibility to change the quality of your life, to improve the quality of your life. Now whether you actually take that opportunity or not is up to you, that's exactly. freedom. Exactly. But you have everything we give out can help people really improve the quality so of their lives. And it's that true. feels good. When we have a problem, most of us go, oh, panic, panic, God, what are we going to do, blah, 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 blah. But I have something that I try to get people to say. When the minute there's a problem, you stop and you go, all is well. All is well. Everything's working out for my highest good. And out of this experience, only good will come. And I am safe. And you do this, if it's a small thing, I say it two or three times. If it's a bigger issue, I babble it incessantly. But all is well. Everything is working out for my highest good. Out of this situation, only good will come, and I am safe. Now, this gives, this quiets your inner turmoil down long enough for the universe to find the solution to the so-called problem. See, when there's problems, we don't have to fix problems so much. We need to fix our thinking and our attitude about how we respond to them. And then you get less and less. And when, and when the solution comes, you say thank you. I want you to just... They can connect with exactly. us. Exactly. I want you to think back to that memory, if it feels safe to do so. Mm -hmm. And how do you see that memory now? Is it, do you feel tension in your body? Is it a picture you see? Is it just something you remember? Well, it's a feeling. It's a feeling. It's a feeling. Okay. And what's the feeling? Well, it's a, a, a feeling of fear. Mm. It's not the terror that it was, but it, it, it's still there because, okay. you know, the child is very helpless in that point. Yeah. And can't really do anything to get out of it. It's a trapped situation. Mm. And where do you feel that fear in your body? Oh, in here. Okay. Very much. I say thank you many, many, many times of the day, often not to anyone else. I just, you know, oh, thank you. That's so wonderful. Thank you. And it's, uh, you know, you find more and more things to be thankful about. We were, I was driving up today from uh, San Diego, and the, uh, the wildflowers on the hillsides are just beautiful this year. And I was thinking I was so glad that I had the opportunity to see them. Because if I stayed down there, I wouldn't have. But this drive, which was, you know, not a drive I particularly wanted to make, but it was gorgeous. The simple part that most people don't understand is that every thought we think and every word we speak is creating our future. It's as though our thoughts go out into the universe and are accepted and brought back to us as experience. Now that is a very simple thing, but most people don't get it, they don't understand it, they've never heard it before and they think it's ridiculous. But if you can really accept the fact that every time you think a thought and every time you speak a word, you are literally painting your future, uh, making your dinner, uh, whatever you want to call it, you are creating. And you're creating your own life. And this is simple, but it's not easy to accept. But once you accept it, then you can start deliberately creating what you want in your life.
and you begin to be aware of what you don't want in your life and how you are contributing to it. Now I think this has been around forever but for some reason in the last 20 years the universe has wanted this to go out among all the people or all the people that are ready for it. See most of us just think, 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 think and we don't pay any attention to what we're thinking. We're just doing it. But that's a, something you need to train yourself to do. To begin to train yourself to be aware of what you're thinking. And, and one of the ways to do that is to periodically say to yourself, what am I thinking? Would I like this thought to create my life? Would I like to have the experience that this thought could bring to me? Now it takes a while to do that, but even if we could begin on the smallest level to be aware of our thinking, we can start to make changes. Doing the work, they can go and tap on mm -hmm. those issues. So sort of combine both together. You do the mirror work, it brings up the things that are bubbling. Or maybe you can even tap in front of the mirror. Maybe that'll be the next innovation, to tap and, and say affirmations in front of the mirror. You know. Yes. So, yes. So do you want to do a little tapping? Sure. You know, for, for, sure. The, for the crowd. So I know we did a little, there, you had a little neck pain the last yes. couple of days. So we it, did some it's tapping. It's better, but the, we could always do a little more yeah. on that. So how, do do? how deep do you want to go? Well, how do you, do you want to take me? <laughs> so let's, for, for people who weren't with us okay. privately the last couple of sessions, let's talk about the neck pain and what was going on and, mm -hmm. um, and our, our conversation. It started as some spasms? Yes, it started as some spasms that wouldn't go away. Okay. And I was feeling tremendous pressure back here and down my neck. And uh, I realized that this went back to a time when I was five years old mm. and um, my stepfather used to hold my head under water mm. and he had his thumb in that particular place. Yeah. And my thought was, for some reason, it's time for me to let this go. Yeah. And the thing is how to find out how to do it. When life calls us, that's when we have to answer. People say, how did you do everything that you did? Well, I answered the telephone and opened the mail and did what, it, what was in front of me. And then life would give me something else to do and something else to do. And it's interesting because it's now been, I think, 25 years since I wrote the second book, You Can Heal Your Life. And in that period of time, I, that book alone has sold 40 million copies worldwide. And I feel, I've always felt that I didn't do anything to promote it at all. It's just life took over and life said this book is going to go to this country and this book is going to go to this country and go to this country. And it's gone many, many places all over the world. I even have two Chinese versions. There's the Chinese version of uh, traditional China, and then there's the Chinese version of the Taiwan, which is the new China. You never know where life is going to take your work. And I think that it's important that you don't go into it to say, how much money can I make? Oh, I'm going to be rich. I've got to do this. Because books don't make you that rich. But what they do is open the world to you. And my thought has always been, how can I help the people? How can I help the people? Gratitude works a lot. Uh, if just being grateful for everything. The more, I always say the universe loves gratitude. The more you're grateful for what the good is in your life, the more good you get to be grateful about. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like, you know, if somebody gives you a present and you're, or gives me a present and I say, oh my God, I hate that color and it doesn't fit and, you know, that person will never give me another present. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you say, oh, it's wonderful and thank you, I really adore it, it's great, that person is probably going to want to buy you a present every time they see something they think you would like. And it's like that with the universe. The universe loves gratitude. For those of people that have tried to change their thinking but seem to be stuck and can you give them some advice to help them to be more positive or to get through Well, those I don't places? think that, that they've been trying and they're stuck. I think they just haven't tried. Because if <laughs> you will practice this, even a small amount, 
it makes a difference. I have a simple exercise I give everybody, and some people say, oh, that's so stupid, it's so <laughs> silly. But I ask them to look in the mirror, especially first thing in the morning, and just look in their eyes and say their name and say, I love you, I really, really love you. And this is enormously hard for most people to do to begin with, but as you continue to do it, it makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. You see, life loves you. Life really loves you. But if you don't love yourself, it's very hard for life to bring you the goodies because you've got this wall up. Mm -hmm. So when you can learn to love who you are, and that's the way you were born, when you were a little tiny baby, and when I say you, I mean everybody mm -hmm. listening to this, mm -hmm. uh, we all adored ourselves. We loved our bodies, we loved every mm -hmm. part of ourselves. And then we started to listen to other people who told us we weren't good enough, or we didn't do it right, or no, no, no. Mm -hmm. And so we decided that maybe we weren't very good. And that's where we get all mixed up. But when we can get back to that point of just adoring this marvelous critter in here, mm -hmm. uh, then life says, oh, they've, she's got it, she's got it, let's give her goodies. Mm -hmm. And then the next step is to be very grateful about it. Yes. When you're really grateful, then they want to give you more. When I work with people, when I workshops or classes or anything, I always try to get people just to open their arms so that we can let the new in. Remember, this is the subconscious mind and this is where we're holding. So this is saying, nothing new will get in. So I always like to feel that I'm open and receptive to new ideas, and I'm willing to learn, and I'm willing to change, and I'm willing to grow. And sometimes I don't want to, and sometimes it hits areas that I don't really care to change at the moment. And, you know, that's always an area that I know is important for me to work on. To me, I think enlightenment is letting go of all the things we believe that are not benefiting us us in life or the barriers to our life to the good things in life and to release them one by one and to think I don't have to believe that anymore or do I want to believe that anymore and making a conscious choice when we can understand that every single thing we believe has been a choice and it may or may not be true it can be true for you and not for you because it's your belief system and your belief system and then I have my belief system. I say a lot. Uh, that may be true for you, it's not true for me. I may not say that out loud, but people are doing things or saying things and I think that to myself a lot. And also it has nothing to do with me. Whatever's going, that has nothing to do with me because I'm under the law of my own consciousness. This is my pathway and you have your pathway, you have yours, everybody does. So we're, we're all on a journey and I think the more conscientious we are about it and the more conscious choices we make, the better our journey is or the easier or the swifter or the, we get more goodies or we have better health. If you have very strong beliefs within you that you don't deserve good things in your life, Mm -hmm. and a lot of people have that then there can be delays and sometimes people say well affirmations don't work I've done them but it, when they're doing for instance prosperity affirmations and they've done some prosperity affirmations and they say it doesn't work nothing's happening and I say well alright how many prosperity affirmations did you do in a day and they'll say three probably mm -hmm. and they say alright how many poverty affirmations did you do this day and that could be 300 depending on where you're coming from and what are, is running through your mind. See, I have this, one of my thoughts about life is that only good lies before me. And I have been saying this for many years. So it doesn't really matter to me what happens in life because I know it's going to be good. Remember, little tiny babies when they're born, they absolutely adore themselves. And they're totally open and they're full of love. They express themselves freely. They ask for what they want. They love their bodies from the top of the toe to the top of their head to the tip of their toes and every point in between, including their own feces, which they'll gladly rub all over their bodies <laughs> because nobody's taught them guilt and shame. They know how wonderful they are. And then somewhere along the line, we get this idea that we're not good enough. And we start putting our tape, tape measures around our waistline to tell us if we're acceptable. 
or we read magazines that say we have to be a certain height or a certain weight before we're acceptable. Or we listen to the media that says we have to use a certain deodorant before we're acceptable. You know, it just doesn't make sense. We are absolutely divine, magnificent expressions of life, all of us. And like when we were in the circle looking at each other, we each face is another unique expression of God. And we're not supposed to be alike. Since time began on this planet, there have not been two snowflakes alike. And there's certainly not been two people alike. And we're always trying to be like everybody else so we're acceptable. Our uniqueness is what makes us wonderful. So we want to love that and cherish it and acknowledge it. You see, if we really believe in our uniqueness and the wonder of each being, then there is no competition and no comparison. There can't be. We're just different. And we're meant to be different. And that's wonderful. Every single thought we have or every sentence we speak is an affirmation. And it's either positive or negative. And it's going out from us and it's creating our experiences. However, when we talk about doing affirmations, what we're talking about is making definite positive statements to create something in our life or to remove something in our life. You see, if you stand there and say, I don't want this job, or I don't want this relationship, or I don't want these hips, or I don't want whatever, that does not get you what you want. That's what I call fighting the negative. And it doesn't do anything but keep what you have that you say you don't want. However, if you start saying and doing affirmations that I have a wonderful new job, or I have this most absolutely marvelous relationship, then you're beginning to create what it is you do want. Affirmations are like planting seeds. And if you think for a moment, when you put a seed in the ground, you do not get instant tomato plant or instant strawberries or instant oak tree. That seed goes in the ground and it has to germinate. That's the first thing, which means it breaks open its little shell and little roots begin to go down and it gets nourishment from the earth and only then does the first little shoot come up through the ground now when we're doing affirmations too often people say well that isn't a million dollars and they stomp on that first little shoot <laughs> they don't give it a chance to grow <laughs> doing affirmations is like planting a seed in the ground and watering is it, it is like repeating your affirmations. And you just keep doing them, and you keep doing them, and you keep doing them. And it doesn't matter whether you see the results or you don't see the results. And sometimes it just takes time. And too many people will do affirmations for two or three days and say, see, it doesn't work. <laughs> you know, if everything happens in the perfect time space sequence and we want to trust that and we want to know that so if you begin to do affirmations for yourself and I think it's important that we do that on a daily basis decide what you want and begin to do positive statements in present tense for what you want you never want to say I will have or I'm going to have because if you do that it keeps it in the future and remember if you say I have a wonderful new apartment and you're living in a dump it doesn't mean that this is not a true statement it means you are planting the seed that will germinate and grow and become the new apartment I think we get we all get certain ahas and that's when we've sort of learned something we say oh okay and then if we can keep that what we've learned and practice it then we've made another step and we can move forward. Um, yes, it's a lifetime journey and we never stop learning. I'm 80 and I'm still learning. <laughs> Though the lessons are easier now than they used to be. I like to think of that when we start, we have all these boulders in front of us on our pathway. And we start to get the boulders out of the way. And you finally get to the point where it's gravel. And gravel you can handle, you know, and you can sweep gravel and you can do things. So, and then occasionally there's an old boulder.
<laughs> rolls back into your path. <laughs> you think, oh, I thought I, I thought I had that one, but not completely. And and you know, also, I think that when we learn lessons, we think, oh, I've learned that one; it'll never happen again. I've done that; and that's it. Well, how do you know you've done it unless it comes by once more? and see how you react. Have you really learned it? Is it really nothing for you? Have you gone beyond that? Or are you going to go right back into the same old reaction? See, we're never wrong. That's what we need to learn that. We're, we're always doing the best we can with the understanding and awareness and knowledge we have at that moment. If you're in a job you don't like, if you're in a relationship you don't like, if you're in a, a house you don't like, and you want something new, begin to bless with love. <laughs> Interesting. To bless with love where you are. And, and know that you're releasing your current situation with love. If it's a job, release it with love to the next person who will be delighted to have it. If it's an apartment, do the same thing. If it's a relationship, release that person with love to happiness which is meaningful to them. And that leaves you free to create and accept happiness that is meaningful to you. You say you have to start with beginning to love yourself. I think you hear a lot of that in the 80s. And what, the, what does that mean? It means to stop putting yourself down. Stop criticizing yourself. Stop mistreating yourself. Begin to treat yourself as something that's very precious. And when you begin to love who you are, then you can love your neighbor because you love yourself. You see, I don't think we can really love our neighbor till we do love ourselves. If it is true that your thoughts shape your life, would you want what you were just thinking right now to become true for you? If it's a thought of worry or anger or hurt or revenge or fear, how do you think this thought will come back to you? If you hear yourself expressing negative words of any sort, stop in mid-sentence. Either rephrase the sentence or just drop it. You could even say to it, out. You get to choose any and all thoughts you wish. These thoughts create your future experiences. Let us stay away from thoughts that create problems and pain. Some of you know my little blue book and the fact that I've been doing a lot of work with dis-ease for a long time. And for every part of the body, there is a mental pattern. And for every dis-ease in the body, there is a mental pattern. And when you know what they are, you can begin to change the mental patterns so that you can change the dis-ease. You see, we don't want to be sick. Now, that's a blanket statement. Sometimes people do want to be sick because it's a good way to get out of something. The rest of us know how to say no. If you don't know how to say no, you may have to create an illness in order to say no. Because that's, we've made in society, we've made that a legitimate way of, of getting out of things. But basically, we do not want to be ill, and yet we need every dis-ease that we have. Because it is the body's way of telling us that there is a false idea in consciousness. Something that we're doing, something that we're believing, something that we're saying is not for our highest good. And the body is saying, please. And it's sort of almost like tugging, saying, pay attention. So when we know what these patterns are, it gives us, again, a choice of whether we wish to do something about it or not. There are lots of things you can do to help you become more conscious of what is going on. And because so many of our belief systems really are unconscious or subconscious, we're not aware of them. They're just things that were bred into us as we were children, uh, is to take a little time to figure out what they are. And I always say a really good exercise is to take a big sheet of paper and write on top of it, say, what I think about men. And then another one, what I think about women, what do I think about uh, money, what do I think about any subject you can think of. Uh, and just write all the things that come down, come out of your thoughts. And whether they sound good or not, just write them down. And I I I any one subject, if you just write them all down and then look at them and see how many are positive and how many are negative. 
And if you can take those negative ones and turn them around, make them into positive affirmations, then you can start clearing up what you believe about, say, money that is not positive for you. And, or, or is keeping you from bringing money in. Uh, and, and you can do that with lots of things in your life. So you can really begin to realize what you do believe about these things. So you can't change your thoughts if you don't know what your thoughts are. There is a law of thinking and we are beginning to learn about it. And it is like a computer. If you have this gorgeous computer put in front of you and you don't know what to do with it, it's a piece of junk. But if you learn the language of the computer, miracles happen. And that is what the law of thinking is. When you learn how it works, miracles happen. What you think and what you believe is what will come true for you. Your thoughts create your life. It's that simple. And when we can get that, we can make enormous changes. Is stop scaring yourself. How often do you terrorize yourself with your own thoughts? You get into absolute terror and it's only coming from your thoughts. Nobody out there is doing a thing. Sometimes it's an old family pattern. Sometimes we get new things. I would like people, to, when you have time, to make a list of your fears. Make a list of your fears and then give yourself the opportunity to turn each fear into a positive affirmation. Turn each one into something positive. And remember, always you are in charge. You are always in charge. See, one idle thought doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Thoughts are like drops of water. You drop a drop of water and it doesn't mean much. But if you keep dropping and keep dropping, you get a puddle on the floor, and then you can get a little pond and a lake, and finally you can create an ocean. And with our own thoughts, we can drown in a sea of negativity, or we can float on the ocean of life. And it's up to us. The thoughts we think accumulate, and what sort of puddles are you standing in? Or are you up to here? Or are you up to here and trying to paddle? Now what are you doing to yourself? When we're willing to change our thinking, we can change our experiences. And it doesn't matter if you've got a big puddle of negative thoughts. You know, you can move over here and create a puddle of mindfulness positive thoughts. You can make changes, always. So you want to turn those fear thoughts into positive affirmations. Let them work for you. I have a thing, when I was seeing people, that I got to the point where I would not see anyone who did not make their own appointment. I have found occasionally people have sent people to me as a present. Oh, you must go see Louise. Here, I'll give it to you as a present. Every one of those has turned out to be a disaster. Half the time the people didn't turn up. When they did turn up, they weren't really interested. When they seemed to be interested, they never went away and did anything. Or if they did, it was a little bit, and they never came back. We have to be ready to do it ourselves. Remember, each person has come to this planet to learn a lesson. You have your lessons, you have your lessons, I have my lessons, you have your lessons. They're all different. We cannot learn the other person's lessons. We are not here to change other people. We are here to change ourself. That is what we've come to the planet for, to change ourself. If we try to do it for someone else, or learn their lesson, or make it nice, they don't get to learn it. And even if we fix it, isn't it amazing how they turn around and recreate it again? And we all know people like that. We've paid their rent, or we've gotten them out of some mess, or we've done this for them or that for them. And two months later, they're in the same problem because it's their pattern. It has nothing to do. Teaching them how to get out of it, it is much better if they're willing to learn. So it's like, you know, the student must come to the teacher. And when the student is ready, the teacher is there, always. I think it really starts with realizing that you don't love yourself. 
that most people don't. Most people feel they're not good enough, that they haven't done it right, they won't do it right, they'll never be enough, and they're definitely not lovable. And when we come from that space, it's very hard to create things for ourselves that are really good. So in the early days when I worked with people, I used to uh, fix this problem and fix that problem and you'd have this a health thing and we'd work on that and we'd work on this. And one day I discovered, much to my amazement, that if I would help people learn to love themselves, to really accept themselves as they are, we didn't have to work around problems because it was almost like a miracle. Everything seemed to fall away. It's a hard one for people because we're, we grow up believing that we're not good enough and nothing is right. Uh, I remember lots of times I would ask people, well, what is really wrong with you? What have you done that is so terrible that you're not acceptable to yourself? And I never, ever, ever got an answer that made any sense. You know, they might say something like, well, I'm too fat. Well, so, <laughs> you know, uh, but I, th when you talk about loving yourself, a lot of people think that that's vanity, but it isn't really, it has nothing to do with that, uh, that is narcissistic, but to really care for you and to acknowledge that you are an important being, it's almost like in the Bible they would say, uh, you recognize that you are a child of God, that therefore you are perfect. But even if you're not a biblical person, if you can recognize that you are a being that has self-worth, if you can really recognize your own worth, then you start to treat yourself differently. And I think that's what's so very important about loving yourself, is you stop beating yourself up, you stop making yourself wrong, you stop talking about how awful you are, and you stop saying things like, I'm really stupid and stuff, and you start to treat yourself with a certain amount of respect. And this makes an enormous difference because what you give out in life is what comes back to you. So if you're giving out a feeling of, I'm okay, I'm good enough as I am, and I am acceptable, and I love life, and I love me, and you start having gratitude for yourself and for life, then life treats you differently because you are having a different vibration that you're giving out and getting back. And that's when things really start to flow. Now, a lot of people don't realize it, but you have to practice. You just have to start it. And that's why I try to get people to do a lot of mirror work. If you look in the mirror, just simple things like looking in the mirror in your own eyes and say, I love you. I really, really love you. And it helps if you use your name, Louise, I love you. I really love you. It gets to that little child inside that has been rejected for so long and it breaks open sort of a, a dam or a, a door or whatever you want to call it and it's like little miracles start to happen lots of little good things happen and the universe loves grateful people the more grateful you are the more you get to be grateful about people think that prosperity is just money but really, there's many, many other things that come under this auspices of prosperity. You know, you can be very poor in time. If you feel really rushed all the time and always pressured, you have poverty in your time. But if you feel that you have all the time in the world and that whatever you want to finish, you'll get done and it will, it will all happen, then you're really prosperous in time. And what about success? You know, if you feel that it's really way beyond your reach, then you're never going to get it. But if you feel that you can be successful, whatever that means to you, then that's wonderful, that's prosperity. Wisdom, do you have prosperity and wisdom? Do you feel that all the wisdom in the universe is available to you? Or do you think, oh, I'm just me and I don't know very much and, you know, I can't figure things out. If you feel that you're really connected with the universe and you really trust that part of you that's inside, then you can be absolutely prosperous in the abundance of wisdom. And what about love? Do you feel that you have an abundance of love? Or are you very poor in love? Is there very just a little bit of it in your life? How about joy? Do you feel you're really prosperous and have an abundance of joy? Or is that something you just allow yourself a little bit of now and then? And you really are very poor in joy. And then what about beauty? 
Do you see beauty everywhere? Do you allow yourself to experience an abundance of beauty? And of course, there's money then. There's money too. You know, what do you let yourself have? I like to use that uh, image a lot of the ocean, standing in front of the ocean with a container in your hand. You know, and you're there and you have this container, but what is it? Is it a thimble with a hole in it? Is it a small cracked cup? Is it a mug? Is it a vase? But no matter how much you have, whatever your container it is, and no matter how much you're taking from the ocean of life, and even though we're all standing there, we're not robbing each other, and there's plenty for everyone. And no matter how much we take, there is no way we're going to run that ocean dry. It's absolutely impossible. And if you can th see yourself standing at the ocean of life in the same way, and remember the container that you have is your consciousness, and you can always change your consciousness. And it doesn't matter if you came from poverty. It doesn't matter where you came from. And it doesn't even matter what your parents' beliefs were. Because it's your consciousness and what you're choosing to think and believe about prosperity and your ability to deserve it is what's going to create it for you. I want you to say to yourself your name. I love you. I really, really love you. I love you. I really, really love you. It's a new thing. You probably haven't done it before. But what we're really trying to do is to connect with the inner child within, who has been neglected for so very long. Most of us, when we look in a mirror, we criticize ourselves, we make fun of ourselves, we say derogatory things to ourselves. It's a habit. And what we want you to do is to start connecting with that inner child within you that wants so much to be loved and hasn't been for perhaps years and years and years and years, and maybe never when it was a child. I know this is a tough one to stay, but if it's too tough to start with, you can start with something like, ah, Louise, I'm willing to learn to like you not quite so threatening. So I want you to, this is something I want you to do a lot. First thing in the morning, I want you to get in the habit of having your little mirror with you, whipping it out at any time, or any time you pass a mirror, say something nice to yourself. I, I will look at myself and say, you look fantastic, kid. And sometimes I'll say, you know, you may not be as tight and taut as you used to be, but you're fabulous, you're absolutely wonderful. We want to be our own cheerleader. We want the things that we say to ourselves support us and love us and make us feel good or make us feel silly. You know, you're a hot potato. And it's not only just saying you love yourself, but do your affirmations in front of a mirror. Do forgiveness in front of a mirror. If you have somebody you need to forgive, do it in front of a mirror. And have, get yourself, a, if you have a big mirror, sit down in front of it, because you won't run away. You can't, it's too hard to get up. And you can sit there and you can cry, but you'll go through it, whatever it is, and it'll be fast. The mirror, as small as this may be, can really help you connect with yourself. We're looking in the mirror and saying, how can I make you happy? What can I do to make you happy today? Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end, and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video. I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. If you want 10 more amazing rules from Louise Hay, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. I would like people, to, when you have time, to make a list of your fears. Make a list of your fears and then give yourself the opportunity to turn each fear